Yeah, I, I don't know if you can relate to a jellyfish the way you would to a dog or a cat or even a snake, but the fact that they have a certain regularity to their pulsing may be the beginning of the pacemaker that we have in our heart. These things are all sort of very much ingrained into us. There's a laboratory on the Atlantic coast where jellyfish open up to reveal secrets of life and death. There, a famous colony of immortal jellyfish polyps have sat unchanging since the 1930s. These immortal jellyfish are in the care of the renowned Dr. Dorothy Spangenberg, famous for being the first person ever to send jellyfish into outer space with NASA. Jellyfish are among the simplest organisms but they have sensors, called gravity receptors, located in their arms that help them maintain their balance and know where they're going. Humans have this too in our inner ear. By sending jellyfish up in space, we hope to find out if they would react differently in microgravity than on Earth. Dr. Dorothy Spangenberg is the real expert who made it all happen for us. And people from all around the world sent her different types of jellyfish to study. That's why they call her the Jellyfish Lady. My husband, he was a priest in charge of a small church, so we would go together to the beach in Corpus Christi, Texas, on his days off. But I wanted jellyfish. <laughs> and we found jellyfish. He had a church nearby. So he might say, you know, I grew the first ones you know, in the rectory. <laughs> I relate to them as learning tools, opportunities to learn more about things that have to do with you and me, you know? Well, th this came to me through a colleague. He had developed a correspondence with this man called Lambert. He lived in London and he was growing jellyfish. But I got some of them, and I still have them. Dr. Frank Latanzio has been her research partner for years. He set up a microscope with the tiny pulsing beings who had outlived Churchill, Hitler, and celluloid film. All organisms are designed to reproduce, and unfortunately for the jellyfish, once they get to the form that we're most familiar with, the male and female, they're on their way out, and they die uh, after they release the sperm and eggs. So how have these jellyfish polyps lived all this time without aging? It was Dr. Spangenberg herself who discovered something called the iodine effect. They use iodine to metamorphose in terms of them becoming the free swimming form that everyone is familiar with. They don't go there until you trigger them with iodine. So you're sort of holding them at pre-puberty. They can sit there for decades and keep on and on and on. Abstinence in this particular case keeps you alive for quite a period of time. It's possible they can outlive us. <laughs> I think they're going to outlive me, that's for sure. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say sex necessarily always equals death, but it does you know, limit our potential to uh, remain around. As far as the biology goes, you've done your deed. You know, you've done what you're supposed to do. You've allowed the next generation to come forward. So you know, we are you know, generally short term. You know, I've put in 50 years, and there's just so many more questions. You never get all the answers you want. But I've always had a fondness for the Lamberts because they're getting older and older, so they would be a good model for studying aging, I think. But I just haven't gotten to it yet. <laughs>